We've all talked about the future. Well, I'm happy to tell you the future's here. This is the future of high-speed transport. Can you imagine traveling around the world at the speed of a bullet? Does that sound dubious to you? In theory, you could go from LA to San Francisco in 35 minutes for under $40, thanks to Elon Musk, who's at the forefront of implementation of this technology and very close to making it happen. What is this high-speed transport? It's called the Hyperloop. Hyperloop is a hybrid of air and rail transport. Pods or carriages float in tubes raised by magnetic levitation to overcome friction and flying through a virtual vacuum to avoid air resistance. How was Elon Musk planning to build his Hyperloop to be the fastest means of transport? Well, sit down and watch us go into detail. But before you do that, make sure you boost the video by clicking the like button. Don't forget to sign up and click the bell and trust me when I tell you, you don't want to miss our videos coming your way. As the roads are very congested in many areas and air traffic is subject to weather conditions, it seems attractive to many who travel to take this high-speed technology. Hyperloop is currently being developed by several companies, including The Boring Company, Hyperloop One, Virgin Hyperloop, HTT, Hawaii, Hyperloop, and many others. HTT and Hyperloop One initially launched the innovation, but Musk wasn't very impressed by the efforts of those two companies, so he built one through his company, The Boring Company. Musk first described the idea for futuristic transport systems as one that would steer passenger pods and tubes at speeds of several hundred kilometers per hour way back in 2013. At the time, the idea of building and operating a so-called Hyperloop was so far-fetched to say the least, but it's happening much faster than expected, and it's happening all over the world. In August 2013, Musk came out with a 57-page white paper describing this high-speed, long-distance transport system that would steer pods full of goods or people in a vacuum up to 700 miles per hour. The idea of city-to-city high-speed trains was popularized by the Japanese over 50 years ago with the Shikansen train system. Bullet trains, they're called, and they entered service with the Tokyo to Shikansen in 1964 during the Olympic Games. Today, the fastest lines run about 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour. Zoom. Hyperloop is a concept developed by Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla, for ultra-fast intercity travel. Using these pods inside these tubes, he calls it a fifth mode of transport in addition to cars, planes, boats, and trains. Musk had opened up the technology to development by outside parties, noting at the time that his other companies didn't have the bandwidth to market the technology. Other startups include Shervin Pfeiffer's Hyperloop One and Dirk Allborn's Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. They took up the challenge and worked to develop the technology from a technical point of view paving the way for commercialization. Radical plans to transform the inner urban movement of passengers and goods are taking shape as the world's ultra-fast Hyperloop systems come close to reality. The Musk Boring Company has been permitted to start digging up potential Hyperloop in Washington, D.C. The potential advantages of Hyperloop are that it's fast, it's cheap, and it's environmentally friendly. Musk says the pods themselves will be comfortable, safe, and they travel one by one and are 23 miles apart. Each will be equipped with different emergency braking systems. The experience of riding in one of these things would be serene. You're in something that feels like an airplane hull, but no air passing in front of you. The feeling would be very unusual. The Hyperloop tracks would consist of steel tubes with a diameter of about three meters that are placed on the ground but Musk still distinguishes himself from the rest, so he would like to place these underground. Routes must be carefully chosen to avoid existing infrastructure, such as roads and buildings, to ensure that you don't take sharp turns that could expose a passenger to an accident or an unpleasant shock. The construction of the Hyperloop is part of Musk's side project. It is based on the assumption that the extensive network of tunnels of different levels would deeply resolve congestion problems in any city regardless of size. There are some problems with the idea, but it doesn't matter. The company is already digging tunnels in Los Angeles. It's no coincidence that Musk chose Los Angeles and San Francisco as test routes. The Hyperloop is designed for city pairs at least 900 miles apart. Shorter distances don't allow sufficient acceleration time. While on longer routes, the paper speculates the supersonic aircraft could be both faster and cheaper. 
A spokesman for the Boring Company explained the company plans to build different types of transport systems in the tunnels. Some will be pressurized as standard with electric skates up to more than 125 miles per hour, while others will use pressurized pods in a non-pressurized tunnel to allow speeds of up to 600 miles per hour. For acceleration, the Hyperloop would use a linear accelerator, essentially the railgun promised in Musk's first descriptions of the system, accelerating the pod through a traveling electromagnetic pulse. As the pod approaches its destination, the process is reversed, causing it to be slowed down by the same electromagnets and absorbing the kinetic energy right back into the system. The result would be impossible to crash or derail and the inner pod would be immune to external weather conditions like fog or snow. So the only safety concern is to maintain the integrity of the track itself. The plan calls for many expansion joints to deal with thermal shifts, tube thickness of a nearly full inch to prevent buckling. The pods move on an air cushion in the tube in the same way as maglev trains or magnetic levitation, which is pushed away from the rails and pushed forward utilizing electromagnets. An electric compressor at the front of the pod pushes the air backward. Once the construction of the commercial Hyperloop route begins, it's likely to prove costly. According to Forbes, some estimates suggest that one mile of Hyperloop road could cost $121 million. The tubes and pods will be powered by engines and batteries developed by Tesla and solar panels on the outer surface of the tube. Acceleration and deceleration is provided by a linear induction motor, a flat electric motor ideal for creating straight line movement. The Hyperloop would carry passengers in aluminum pods at speeds up to 800 miles per hour, mainly on the I-5 route from California. The estimated cost, US dollars, $6 billion for the passenger only model, $7.5 billion for a larger model capable of transporting a car. The biggest puzzle is how Musk's lower power loop would maintain such high speeds without a huge loss of power due to friction. The California High Speed Rail Authority's plans for the Los Angeles-San Francisco line proposed a train traveling at 200 miles per hour at a cost of $60 billion. Musk said that project's too expensive for a high-speed train and it would be one of the slowest in the world, and said the price of a Hyperloop connection would only be $6 billion, a figure critics say is probably unattainable. The price of the Hyperloop fare is uncertain also, but Musk is planning to make transport as cheap as possible. Hyperloops may not be a zero-sum game at all. The first one to get it done may get a claim. It may not write history because the competition is going to be high. New companies will keep bringing in new and better ideas, which will consume a lot of money. Hyperloop One Company appears to be the best-funded startup company working on Hyperloop technology and has made impressive progress recently. It recently reached a top speed of 192 miles per hour in a test with the complete system in a real pod and a vacuum tube. Musk could probably have worked or competed with them, but he didn't, especially as he knows Shervin Fishar, the chairman of Hyperloop One. He described the boring company as just a side project with a few engineers and interns. But SpaceX, his rocket company, has also developed part of the Hyperloop technology through their pod competition. Although Musk said he didn't want to be involved in the development of the commercial Hyperloop application, his SpaceX was the first to build a complete Hyperloop test tube. For the competition, SpaceX built a one kilometer long test track in the middle of Los Angeles. It's a functional Hyperloop that can create a vacuum of 0.02 PSI or 99.8% vacuum to 14.7 PSI sea level pressure. So what do you think of this technology called Hyperloop? Do we need it? And would you suggest that Musk participate in the commercial application of this piece of technology? Tell us about it in the comments below. Give us your opinions. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, click on the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions or there's something you need me to talk about, well, let me know by leaving a comment below. And I'll be more than happy to make that video. Don't forget, subscribe, click on that bell. And thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next video.